there guys, welcome back and if you're new to the channel thanks very much for tuning in Well I just thought I'd have a quick session, I'm back on the shore I'm not long back home from work, it's about half past six in the evening and I'm fishing really local, literally five minutes drive from my house uh, I'm going to be targeting sea bass tonight, hopefully uh, and this will be the first one of the season if I get any and uh, I'm going to be using the Bombarda now some people you call it the Bombarda float uh, I actually just call it the Bombarda It's very popular in Europe Particularly in Sweden when targeting uh, sea trout And it's also used for like carp fishing and all that sort of thing So my setup that I'm using, very simple I've got an 11 foot spinning rod 1000 size uh, reel This is the Pen Battle 3 thousand size and I'll show you the Bombarda so that's a Bombarda like I said some people call it the Bombarda float it comes in a series of three different types and one of them does float and I suppose you could say that's a Bombarda float uh, this is all clear and that's usually a sinking Bombarda this is probably about 40 grams, something like that. You get them in all different uh, weights, five grams up to 60, I believe. And I've got braid on my reel. I've got a little bit of leader, which just protects it from the, the top eye when I'm casting. And I've got approximately nine foot, eight or nine foot of uh, eight pound fluorocarbon And I'm going to start off I'm going to start off just by using a, a shrimp pattern sea fly and I've got that on a, a non-slip loop knot it just for me I think it just adds a bit of articulation I'm going to be fishing this quite close to the bottom being a shrimp pattern and I've got some other flies, uh, light flies of sand eel pattern and all that sort of thing uh, which I'm going to try. I'm only going to give it a couple of hours. The, the tide has just turned, it's on the flood. Uh, conditions really are ideal uh, for sea bass. It's a bit overcast uh, and the wind's sort of in my favour, it's blowing sort of down the water and that's, a, that's going to be the direction of casting. So, like I said, I've got a 8 or 9 foot fluoro leader and the reason I'm fishing so long is because I've got a 11 foot rod and for me, the longer your leader, uh, the further away it is going to be from your bombarda. Uh, hopefully it's not going to spook as many fish. And I'm going to be, because it's sinking, I'm going to be fishing it close to the bottom, this particular fly anyway. And if I switch over, I'll probably try different depths. So, yeah, just see how we get on. Uh, the area that I'm fishing is it's actually part of the Clyde Estuary. And I'm fishing at a place called Rue Narrows. And the reason it's called Rue Narrows is it's a very narrow stretch of the, the estuary. And because it's narrow, the tide pushing through really rips through here. So on the incoming tide, you get a rip on the left-hand side of this point. And then on the outgoing tide, on the opposite side, you get a rip on the opposite side as the tide's pushing through. There's like a bay on this side, I'll give you a look round. There's like a bay on that side, a bay on this side. So obviously as the tide pushes in this way, on the incoming tide, it's going to hit this bay and it's going to start swinging round the point here. And obviously when I get down closer to the water, you will see the water is a bit nervous looking. Uh, but sometimes it really rips through here, about four knots. Uh, and that's why it's a, a really good area for bass. It's a good ambush point, fast flowing water. Uh, but also there is sea trout here as well. Uh, if you are in the local area and you want to target sea trout, you do need a permit and you can get that from the Loch Lomond uh, Anglin uh, Improvements Association. Uh, 
If I do get a sea trout, it's not the target species, it will be returned. In fact, anything I catch tonight, it's all returned. I've got a landing net, just so I'm not having to beach any of the fish and, you know, don't want to harm them in any way. So, we'll see if we get on and hopefully we can maybe nab a fish or two. And I'll go through how I actually use a bombarder, uh, uh, my technique. Everyone's different. And much like any other fishing, any other form of fishing, it's all down to personal preference. But this works quite well for me, and hopefully we can nab a fish. Uh, what I might do if I'm not touching bottom very much, because I'm fishing a, a shrimp pattern, uh, I may put a little shot, a little split shot on this, just so it gets it down. And on either side, uh, once you get over the mussel beds, it is sandy and obviously twitching this along the sand you get little puffs of sand and hopefully that will induce a take anyway guys let's get on and see if we can catch something so guys there's my fly there's my bombarder I'm just going to do a short cast to see if it can pick it up on camera and what you're actually trying to achieve. So what you do is cast out and just before it hits the water, you stop the bombarder. And the reason you stop it before it hits the water, maybe a metre or so off the surface of the water, is you don't want the, the fly because you're casting an ultralight lure, i.e. a fly, you don't want it all to crash down on the bombarder and end up like a snake's wedding. So much like fly fishing, you want to turn that fly over so that it's behind the bombarder and then you can start bringing it in. Now this current is really pushing and that was just a short cast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast up tide, the tide's flowing this way. Don't know if you can see there the nervous water, it's like a rip current that's coming through, and obviously it's flowing up that way through the narrows. So, to cast up tide, let it sink as, as much as well. I'll try different depths, let it sink, and then just little jerky movements as it's a shrimp pattern. Got my first catch of the day. Drag. So up tide, stop it. That fly should turn over, let it sink, and then fairly fast retrieves, little jerking movements. Trying to represent that shrimp pattern skipping along stopped it let it sink maybe count Seven seconds, start the retrieve. So that's the first reason you stop the bombarder before it hits the, uh, the surface of the water. And the second reason that you stop it, which really helps, especially when fishing with braid, is if you're fishing in windy conditions and you're stopping the bombarder before it hits the surface of the water, you know, that'll really reduce sort of any big bellies of line from forming in your braid, which can also add to wind knots and tangles. Cast that a bit further up tight to stop it.
tide's fairly racing in. Another good thing about fishing the Bombarda is you can cast a really long distance with it. Uh, you, you don't need to just keep it for you or keep it for salt water. You can use it in fresh water if you want to fish light flies. Uh, and as I said, you can cast a really long distance. I'll just show you some of the fly patterns that I have. So these are little prawn patterns, some double hooks here, and these are ones that are representing bait fish. Sand eel pattern, when they're wet they're really effective. Some blues, standard sort of colour, blue and white, a little bit of flash, and green and white, a little bit of flash. Uh, some other types, yellows, whites, reds, green, shrimp. They'll all work if there's fish here to be caught. Now on this side it's really shallow, it's only like 8 to 10 feet in the areas. Obviously it'll be deeper when the tide comes in. But at this state of the tide, which is just after the start of the flood tide, you know, it's only about eight or ten feet and then it gets really deep as it shelves off into that deep channel. Maybe try a sand eel pattern or something that represents a bait fish rather than a, a shrimp. Fish on guys. Let's I think it's a sea trout. I just put on the sand eel. Oh, that's a strong fish. Yeah, it's a sea trout. Oh, it's a nice fish. It's 
Not ready yet. Come on, head up. Oh, yes, that is a stonking sea trout. Three pound easy. When you get the hook out, give it a good rest, quick picture, and get this guy back. That was a fly that did the damage guys, sand deal. Give us a good rest up. Hey guys, <laughs> this is an absolute amazing sea trout. Stunning colours. About three pound. Perfect after work session. It's not the intended species, it's after sea bass. This guy's going back. Absolute stunning fish. Oh, fish on. Awesome hit that. I felt it hit once and it came back and smashed it. Oh, that's a little sea trout. A big clump of leaves. A big clump of weed. Come on, fella.
as you can see <laughs> this method is also good for catching sea trout try not to get on the gravel see the fly in its mouth Came out easy. Now we'll get this guy back. Maybe about a pound. And it's off. Right guys, as I said, this would just be a short session. A uh, couple of hours after work. Fishing for sea bass using the bombarder. It is very effective catching sea bass. Only caught a couple of sea trout. One of the sea trout was a stunning sea trout. I would say it's in the region of three pound in weight. And caught another little one, probably just over a pound. Cracking fight the bigger fish gave me. Um, missed the hook up as usual. Uh, I just thought I'd try the, the different fly and all of a sudden smacked into the fish, camera wasn't even on. So give that a try guys, the bombarder. Like I say, that is very effective and uh, let me know how you get on. Leave your comments below. And if you're new to the channel guys and uh, you want to see more then please subscribe and all that wonderful stuff. Hopefully get a sea fishing video out soon guys, a proper sea fishing video either in the kayak or on the shore. I'm on holiday very soon and uh, hopefully get some time to do a bit more sea fishing. Stay tuned guys and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.